Hello everyone, I am Dr. Monica. Welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. So today we will be dealing about cellular adaptations, the first topic under the series of cell injury. So what are these cellular adaptations and why does it even have to happen? Suppose this is a normal cell okay, and I am giving it some stimuli which could be either a pathological stimuli or a physiological stimuli. So what happens when I give the stimuli, the surrounding, the state in which the normal state of the cell has been disturbed. Now the cell has to undergo certain changes in itself so that it can adapt and survive in the new environment created by the stimuli. So these changes which the cell undergoes so that it can survive in the new environment are termed as the cellular adaptations. So remember, these changes are always reversible. It is very important. So whenever the stimuli, which is the pathological or the physiological stimuli has been removed, so the cell state can revert back to its normal state. So these reversible changes in response to these physiological or pathological changes uh, so that the cell achieves a new state so that it can survive in the new altered state is called as the cellular adaptations. So, what are the types of cellular adaptations we have? The cell can either undergo a hypertrophy, a hyperplasia, an atrophy or a metaplasia. We will see one by one what are these. Okay. So, first is hypertrophy. What does hypertrophy mean? This simply means that it is increase in the cell size. So, initially the organelles in the cell will increase in size that will eventually lead to the increase in the size of the cell which will further lead to the increase in the size of the organ. So how does this happen? For a cell to increase in size, the cellular content which is the protein, protein present in the cell must be increased. So how does the protein increase? It will increase by increasing the protein synthesis. So this hypertrophy occurs by increase in the protein synthesis. And only it will it can happen in these non-dividing cells, cells which are not capable of division, they undergo hypertrophy. If the cells are capable of division, then they can undergo hyperplasia. We will deal about it in a short while. So what happens in hypertrophy is that the protein synthesis will increase. How does that increase? With the help of certain transcription factors. There are certain transcription factors like NFAT, NFAT, GATA4 and MEF2, MEF2. So these three transcription factors for some reason it has been asked in MCQs before. So remember whenever these transcription factors NFAT, GATA4, MEF2 increases it will in turn lead to the increase in the protein synthesis. So when protein synthesis increases it will result in hypertrophy. The question will come as the, what are the transcription factors which are responsible for hypertrophy and all the three might be given in the option and some other fourth option will can be given and the question can be asked as an exception kind of a question. Okay. So like I told hypertrophy any cellular adaptation can occur for both a physiological or a pathological stimuli. For each cellular adaptation we will be de dealing with the physiological and the pathological examples. So first coming to the physiological examples of hypertrophy. We all know that the uh, bodybuilders they have bulky muscles. So how do they attain those bulky muscles? So normally if you consider this is a normal skeletal muscle. We have certain skeletal muscle fibers like this. But in these skeletal uh, uh, bodybuilders we have a bulky skeletal muscle wherein the each of the muscle fi fibrils they have increased in size. Can you appreciate this? They have increased in size. Each of this has increased in size. How does it increase? By increasing the in proteins. That is the skeletal muscle proteins will increase. So the skeletal muscle size will also increase. So another example is a lactational breast. Remember lactational has T, uh, two T's. So it has coming under hypertrophy which also has a T in it. Why I am telling this you will uh, realize it in a short while. So lactational breast is an example of hypertrophy. So. Coming to the next example that is pathological hypertrophy, the most common example we see here is the left ventricular hypertrophy. Suppose this is the heart and I am here I am having the iota arising from the left ventricle. Suppose there is an stenosis or an obstruction over here, this is the aortic stenosis. What will happen? The blood is not able to pass out of the iota. So the blood which has to go out of the iota will start getting accumulated in the left ventricle. So this will progress and the left ventricle will start to dilate which will in turn lead to the left ventricular hypertrophy. 
okay so uh, like skeletal muscle cardiac muscle will also not be able to divide so in order to cope with this increased demand produced by the left ventricular dilatation the cardiac muscle has to undergo certain changes that is the left ventricular hypertrophy so that it can accommodate the excess blood which has present in it now the same thing goes for a hypertension hypertension will lead to something uh, called as a pressure overload so pressure overload will also result in this left ventricular hypertrophy now we are dealt with uh, hypertrophy moving on to the next cellular adaptation which is hyperplasia what is hyperplasia it is nothing but increase in the number of cells so when can a num uh, cell number inc get increased only when the cell can divide and proliferate only then the number of the cells can increase so this hyperplasia happens in dividing cells so what is the mechanism by which hyperplasia happens it can happen by two mechanisms the first one is the uh, one in which new cells get derived from the stem cells stem cells divide and they give rise to new cells okay the second mechanism is a mature cell it will receive in, uh, increase in number of the growth factors and the growth factors in turn will stimulate the mature cell to divide and proliferate and this mechanism in which the mature cells divide in response to the growth factor is the most common mechanism okay so coming to the examples of physiological hyperplasia we have liver and bone marrow liver and bone marrow are organs which are capable of division and proliferation okay so this liver we uh, will take an example suppose i am donating a one lobe of my liver for a transplant to some other patient so the rest of the liver can regenerate in the patient or and, and in the donor also so the liver can regenerate to its fullest capacity post transplantation that is because of its characteristic of hyperplasia it can undergo hyperplasia and regenerate the whole liver same thing happens for a bone marrow also suppose a patient is has underwent some trauma and there is massive blood loss or if there is a hemolysis happening inside the patient so rbcs are getting broken down in this condition so either way rbcs are lost so rbcs are lost so what happens the bone marrow will try to compensate for this loss by causing erythroid hyperplasia so the erythroid series will undergo hyperplasia so that it can compensate for the loss seen in this trauma or hemolysis so coming to the pathological examples of hyperplasia uh, we have three examples the first one will be the endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial hyperplasia it occurs in response to this hormone estrogen any increase excess of estrogen hormone any estro high, uh, estrogen excess states can result in this endometrial hyperplasia what is very important about this endometrial hyperplasia is when uncontrolled or when there is some mutation of sorts then it can develop into an endometrial carcinoma and that is type 1 endometrial carcinoma remember endometrial carcinoma is of two types type 1 and type 2 type 1 is because of uh, endometrial hyperplasia undergoing some mutation and developing into type 1 carcinoma the second type is because of endometrial atrophy which in turn will lead to the endometrial carcinoma so both endometrial hyperplasia and atrophy is going to cause endometrial carcinoma we will be discussing the same under atrophy topic also so like i mentioned endometrial hyperplasia under the uh, stimulus of increased estrogen it will undergo uh, endometrial hyperplasia and hyperplasia can in turn uh, turn into endometrial carcinoma type 1 the second example is prostatic hyperplasia which we all know in other name as bph that is benign prostatic hyperplasia in which both the acini the glands and the stromal component of the prostate undergoes hyperplasia and that is in response to a hormone called as dihydrotestosterone so uh, mark it this is also an important question what happens is testosterone the hormone testosterone gets converted into dihydrotestosterone by an enzyme called as 5 alpha reductase so this 5 alpha reductase is responsible for the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone and it is the dihydrotestosterone which is responsible for bph and not the testosterone so this has been asked under mcqs so another pharmacological point i uh, like to stress in here I, the patient, the BPH patient is having urinary symptoms because the urethra is passing through the prostate and whenever this prostate is getting enlarged, it will tend to compress the urethra and the patient will have difficulty in urine. So in that case, the patient will come to the doctor and they will ask for prescription. So what is the drug being prescribed is finasteride. Finasteride, it is, finasteride is a drug which will inhibit 
inhibit this 5-alpha reductase so that dihydrotestosterone is not being produced and that will in turn relieve the symptoms of PPH from the patient. So this again is a question you will read it in pharmacology also. So moving on to the third example which is HPV warts. What is HPV? It is human papilloma virus. Human papilloma virus is either of a high risk type or a low risk type. The high risk genotypes will be 16, 18. The low risk genotypes are 6 and 11. So 16 and 18, they directly lead to the development of carcinoma. Most important carcinoma is carcinoma cervix. So low risk genotypes, they in, uh, lead to the formation of warts and in the genital region, they are called as the condyloma accuminatum. Condyloma accuminatum. So what is characteristic of this HPV warts, uh, HPV is that any HPV lesion, it will lead to the hyperpla uh, hyperplasia of the squamous epithelium. The epithelium will get thickened and there is a characteristic finding in the uh, uh, hyperplastic epithelium which is called as coilocytosis. So what is coilocytosis? It is nothing but perinuclear hollowing, perinuclear hollow along with that remember along with the presence of a racinoid nuclei it is only when you see this racinoid nuclei along with the perinuclear halo it will call it as a coilocytosis so racinoid nuclei is nothing but the uh, nuclear membrane gets irregular it will it will be quite irregular and it will look like a raisin that is why it is called as a racinoid nuclei so look at this example picture over here so can you appreciate there is a perinuclear halo around these nuclei you all see this uh, clear space that is the perinuclear halo and the nucleus does it look normal to you no so here you can see it is all shrunken and it is very irregular so that is called as the coilocytosis and it is characteristic of the hpv lesions so we had dealt with hyperplasia and hypertrophy one other controversy i like to uh, uh, discuss over here so we have two examples gravid uterus and breast in both pregnancy and puberty both of this has both the hypertrophy and hyperplasia both hypertrophy and hyperplasia contribute in this con conditions but if they ask if the option of both is given in the question then you go for both as the option but then if you have to choose between either of them then then there comes the controversy over here so remember in gravid uterus you have this t over here and so hypertrophy which has the T is more common than the hyperplasia. In a gravid uterus it is hypertrophy more than the hyperplasia which contributes to it. While in a breast in pregnancy and puberty we have two P's over here and hyperplasia is also P. So here it is hyperplasia which is more common than hypertrophy which contributes to this condition. So we had now discussed about hypertrophy and hyperplasia then about their examples. Now. Uh, we will deal with the other two cellular adaptations that is atrophy and metaplasia in the part 2 of this video. Hope you like my channel. Let's meet in the part 2. Thank you.